What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 13 of our AI in StarCraft 2 with Python tutorial series. In this video, what we're going to be doing is kind of going over what I'm going to refer to as kind of stage two of our neural network development here. So the first test uh, proved to be at least somewhat successful where the neural network was at least better than random in the four choices at beating the medium leveled um, AI that's like built into the game. So now what we want to do is add complexity to the AI and hopefully create an AI that's a little more impressive than the one that we just made and then see if we can iterate on top of that AI, at least do one more iteration. So like the last one we created an AI, it was pretty good. The next step would be to use that AI, again, fighting hard AI or medium AI or, or itself or all three of those things and see, can we improve that AI even further through that method of training? Because if we can't, well, then I don't know what we're doing here. We gotta like totally regroup and figure out what, what to do next. So, and again, I have no idea. So that might be the case. <laughs> Apologies. Now, um, so let's talk about some of the things that were wrong here, some of the things I wanna change moving forward and all that. So first of all, the names here, uh, wait, okay, I guess I got lost. Um, yeah, here, Supply Depot. I, I don't know why I made that mistake. It should be Command Center, but also that can change, and we'll fix that later. Um, and in fact, we're probably not even going to fix it because we're not going to use it. Um, but anyways, just know I made that mistake. Someone pointed that one out to me. Um, and then also someone pointed out the random variance here. Um, using the enemy start location doesn't make any sense. We should be using variance of the whole entire game map size because depending on, depending on where the enemy start location is, that's going to cause the variance to be quite significantly different. So that was kind of dumb. Next, we have tracking game time much more precisely. Uh, no more kind of estimation. We can get much, much closer. Um, that comes in from our chiatrist. I don't know how to pronounce that, but anyway. Um, the next thing is rather than same person to, rather than arbitrarily sizing our units uh, when we draw them, we can actually just use the unit's radius, uh, which makes a whole lot more sense. Then we've got early scouting. Uh, lots of people took up issue with that. Um, so as it stands right now, we weren't scouting until after four minutes. So what we want to do is send at least a single worker out to scout uh, within that four minute range and um, continue doing that until we've got the observers. And then once we have an observer, we don't just want one, we should have many observers. And we really need to cover all the expansion areas. Uh, one of the other suggestions was that you have observers along the main attack route. We, I, I might do that in the next phase, but in this one, I don't really think I'm gonna bother with that. But we definitely wanna have at least the bases covered. Um, and then once that scouting logic is fixed, uh, we should be able to end the games on time. So anyways, that's what we're going to be working towards, and let's get into it. The code is from part nine of this tutorial series, so if you don't have that, go back to part nine. And actually, I'm pretty sure in the, te yeah, the text-based version of the tutorial, I have the uh, starting code copy and pasted. Anyways... Okay, so the first thing is, let's fix the time. That's a real easy, quick one to fix in this video. I'm gonna comment out self.iteration because I wanna catch any other times we use self.iteration. We also could comment out iterations per minute. Again, we shouldn't be using it anymore now that we know um, the time. So I'm gonna say self.time, and we're gonna say that equals self.state.game loop divided by 22.4, I guess that's how many ticks, uh, anyways. Um, and then I'm gonna do, and that's gonna be um, the number of seconds, and I'm gonna divide that by 60, so it's in minutes. So, so self.time is in minutes, because that's kind of the way we've been thinking this whole time, so I wanna retain that minutes feel. So now what we're gonna do is just search for iteration, and basically fix all these now. Um, the expand logic is no longer going to take really place here, but uh, it, like it's not going to need this logic. It's going to be chosen by the AI itself. Um, but uh, we'll just do self.time. Uh, I'm going to say divided by two. I, that just makes more sense to me. Um, iteration. Let's see if we catch any others. So again, um, this should just be self.time, self.time. 
Land unit stargates is less than self dot time. Build another one. Okay, that's fine. Uh, this one again, self dot time is greater than do something after. And then the random range is um, right here. It's kind of like in our seconds form. I, I'm not really sure how to what to call that, but um, in this case, we would want to wait a random dot rand range of like. I don't know, somewhere between 7 and 100 seconds. But keep in mind, self.time is in minutes. So we want to go ahead and divide that by 100. So that's, uh, you know, up to, not seconds, I'm sorry. Um, basically, you know, 7% of a minute to 100% of a minute. Um, that's how much we want to wait. So uh, next, self.time plus wait. Cool. That should be all the changes we need to make there. And besides that, uh, the only other thing I want to bring up is, and I'm just going to bring over the text-based version of the tutorial, is here. So these are the choices that we're going to make um, as time goes on. So we're going to go from four choices to 14 choices, build a scout, a zealot, um, Scout as in the observer, zealot as in the fighter, gateway as in the thing that builds the zealots and is required for many other things, void ray, stalker, probe, assimilator to get the gas, stargate, pylon, uh, nexus, or defend a nexus rather, um, attack a known enemy unit, attack known enemy structure, expand, do nothing. Um, also, as I say here, uh, the photon cannon is uh, honorable mention. Uh, because I'm not going to do it now because the placement of that cannon is also super important. Um, so I'm not really going to worry about the logic there for that, but um, that's probably something we're going to want to have by stage three. And uh, yeah, okay, so that's it. Let me make sure this runs before I leave you guys and begin another part. <clears throat> While we wait, thank you to my recent sponsor, Steve. Kim, you stand alone in this video, but look how big you can be. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Steve Kim. All right, so hopefully this is going to not air out. We'll see if things start moving. Looks good. Looks very good. Oh, also, I didn't really mention it, too, even in the text-based version, but uh, we, we should simplify our visuals. Um, you know, someone pointed out, like, why are you using colored visuals? And, you know, I don't have an answer to that. Um, I think I just, in my head, I was like, oh, that makes sense to make them colored. Um, but not really. Uh, for the AI to understand, it's probably even, it's just more basic if we made it grayscale. So that's the other thing we'd, we definitely would want to be able to do. Okay, so I think that's all for now. In the next tutorial, what we're going to work on is the scouting. So the scout moving around, no more. We're just going to put the scout at the expansion locations and then order it by distance from the enemy starting point. Um, I think that's the best way to do it, but obviously it's not quite that simple. As you can see, the scouts get destroyed or whatever, and we need to be you know, having quite a bit of handling for all of that kind of stuff. So... Anyway, that is what we're going to be doing in the next tutorial. If you've got questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thank you for your support, your subscriptions, your sponsorships, all that stuff. And I will see you in another video.